to be sitting for a minute. My Lord, we're so happy to be here. It's good to see you here. Let your Lord, we do want to encourage you to continue to get on your telephones. We got, I'm telling you, in any state, city, country, that God sent Brother Terry to put up these tents and have revivals, a lot of people think, so well, I'll get there on the last day and I'll get, and I'll, then the Lord go, and, and you know, the Holy Ghost going to fill, and God's going to move. Uh uh. Oh, oh, hallelujah. Somebody, oh, hallelujah. How many of you understand that? Uh uh. Man, you can't get this in no one day. Oh, hallelujah. I said, you can't get this in no one day. Praise God. Hallelujah. And amen. These, these ten revivals go so fast. They go so fast until by the time you start getting cranked up and ready to go with it, my Lord, it'd be over with it. How many know that? Praise the Lord. So we want to encourage you to get on your telephones. Praise the Lord. Call people. Tell them they need to get down here. My Lord, this revival is going to be going throughout Friday as, as, as far as we know from right now. And then Friday, the Lord is going to lead Brother Terrell. Oh, praise the Lord. How, you, you, did you hear what I said? I didn't say Brother Terrell was going to lead the Lord. I said the Lord's going to lead Brother Terrell. Oh, hallelujah. To anoint us with the horn of oil. Oh, good God of my Oh, hallelujah. Woo. All of the praying and all the, all, the, all the word that's going forth. All the yoke-breaking anointing that's been poured out here. Praise the Lord. That that final service, God is going to cap it off with a Holy Ghost anointing. And as far as I'm concerned, I don't know about y'all, but I come out of the country. And we didn't get cakes too often, but when my mama cooked a cake, she had a thing she made. She called a jelly cake and a caramel cake. I thought I had a few country folks in here. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Hey man, that cake, that cake was good. It was good. That cake was good. But when she put that stuff on it, huh? Huh? Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Man, she poured that caramel on that cake, man. Man, she spread all that good jelly on that cake. Man, that makes it ten times better. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And that's what I feel like when God anoints us in these services. The whole meeting is good. I'm talking about every crumb, every little piece you get. Oh, hallelujah. Everything about it is good. But oh, my Lord, at the end, when God began to pour that anointing upon you, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hey, man, you know, God told one prophet in the Bible, he said that word going to be bitter in your mouth, but it's going to be sweet in your belly. When God put that anointing upon you, hallelujah, you might get a little oil on the outside. It's going to be bitter on the devil, but it's going to be sweet in your belly. Woo! Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. So we want to encourage you to tell folks, come on out here. Get out of here. Praise the Lord. This revival is still going. So well, so well people got to go back to work. My Lord, let me tell y'all something. What greater thing can you take back to work other than this word and this Holy Ghost alone? Ain't that right? Praise God. I tell you, we do, I do appreciate the Lord. I am so excited. I'm so excited, you know, because the Lord, you know, brings in when you get wore down, wore out, tired, muscles ache and everything else. The Lord have a way of just giving you a good spiritual revival. Makes it all better. Ain't that right? Hallelujah. And I don't know nobody else that's doing this kind of stuff. I know a lot of people say, well, the, the, the prophet so-and-so and the bishop so-and-so and the apostle so-and-so and then this so-and-so. But ain't too many doing it. I'm, I'm telling you, we done been in Africa. We done spent years in India. Everywhere we, you don't find nobody else. Nowhere, nowhere preaching this kind of word. Are y'all hearing me? And have God backing them up. Amen. The way God is backing up this word right here. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And to me, children of God, it's an honor to be a part of this right here. Praise God. Hallelujah. And I, I pray God don't never, and I, I don't think Brother Toad's going to get wore out. Praise the Lord. But I, I don't think he can. 
<laughs> oh, oh, I don't think he can. Can I say this right here? He done wore out so many young men. He's not listen to me, listen to me. I ain't <laughs> He take a, he get them when they're young, wear them out till they get old, then throw them away, get them another few young men, <laughs> wear them out. <laughs> oh, hallelujah! Woo! <laughs> and he's still going. <laughs> he's still going. And I really, really love him. I thank God for him for what he stands for. And we just want to encourage you to get in here tonight. I feel such a victory. Praise the Lord, I can feel faith. How I many you feel faith? How I many you feel miracles? Oh, how, you know, when God's people come together like this, ain't no telling what God won't do. Praise the Lord. So we just want to encourage you to do everything you can while Brother Taylor's in this area. My Lord, make a sacrifice. If God, I'm telling you, praise the Lord, and I don't mean no harm, I don't, I don't mean to talk too much. Uh, but if God tells him that there's 300 people got a hundred dollar bill, you better believe it. Praise the Lord. Now I'm just going to tell you a little bit of my discernment. I was looking at y'all this morning. I didn't see ten dollars in the audience. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Now that's my discernment. <laughs> Praise the Lord. If anything, I'd ask y'all to let me use your access card because I just didn't see no money in y'all pockets. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. But how many know the Lord? <laughs> oh, hallelujah. God's real, ain't he? God's real. And I do appreciate it. I said that to say this. You know, the Lord has blessed Brother Joel, you know, with such a, a, I don't know, a gift or whatever it is. Until he, I'm glad he's using it right. And he's using it to help people. We were, he was in Tulsa, and I'll never forget this. And he had taken the offering and everything else. Everything, getting ready to leave. In fact, in fact, he reached for his big coat. And just before he grabbed this coat, he said, the Lord just told me that everybody in here, now he was walking around, he, I was with him in India, he would pick up little rocks and look at them and put them in his pocket. He'd pick up rocks in Africa, put them in his pocket, pick up rocks in Mexico, put them in his pocket. And I said, I wonder what he's doing with all them rocks. <laughs> you know, I, I wouldn't say that. No, don't you mind think sometimes? Praise the Lord. So I, I wonder where you're on all them rocks. Now, Lord of mercy. Anyway, he took this, he got ready to get his coat and he turned back around. And he said, the Lord just spoke to me. He said, everybody in here, if you got a hundred dollar bills, God said, take it out and give it and God's going to bless you. And he said, I'm going to give you one of these rocks. He said, now y'all going to get some storms coming up through here. He said, y'all going to get some killer storms coming up through here. He said, but if you take this rock and put it in your house, God's going to keep you safe from that storm. Oh, hallelujah. Now, he was rattling rocks when he was saying it. He was rattling them in his pocket. I'm just telling you the truth. And as he began to take one out to show it, 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 it fell and rolled across the platform. And I had, now, hey, praise the Lord. Hey, I'm gonna, <laughs> I don't mean what, but it's true. Man, I had dug, I, if, you know, I guess most preachers, if you're like me, you got a rat hole in your billfold. You got a rat hole that you kind of hide from yourself. Well, I had my last little hundred dollar bill folded up real tight, stuck up in that rat hole. And when he said that, man, I went and got it. Praise the Lord. <laughs> and that rock rolled across there by me. He said, Brother Steve, you can get that one right there. Man, I said, oh, no, sir, I got this one. <laughs> Did it, Brother Steve? <laughs> I said, I got this one, praise God. Man, I grabbed that rock, man. My wife, we got one, we put one in the church, one in the house, and different people that was there. Now, it was some preachers there too, see, praise the Lord. It was some preachers there too, wasn't it? Praise the Lord. I don't know whether I'm supposed to tell this part, but I ain't trying to make nobody feel bad or look bad, but it was some preachers there that said, hmm, I, I give folks a hundred dollars for. I, I give people a rock for a hundred dollars. I hey, if that work, hey, I, I give folks a rock all day long. You know what I done? I got up and moved. Amen. I said I ain't gonna let this devil him mess up my faith. And if they get blown away, it's on them. Come on now. 
Amen. Amen. I'm just being honest with you. I got my rock and I shouted. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. <laughs> we took our rock. We put one in the church, one in the house. Praise the Lord. And we made a trip to Africa. I'll never forget this. We made a trip to Africa. Maybe about, maybe almost a month. We left and went to Africa. And then on the way back, when we landed in Atlanta and got off the plane in Atlanta, the, all the televisions all over the airport were showing Joplin, Missouri has just been hit by an F5 tornado. Man, devastated the town. And the lady on the news said, you can hear people in Walmart screaming for their lives. It was one lady. She said, you can even hear a lady praying and calling upon Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. The lady that was in there screaming, hollering, Jesus, Jesus, help. She had a rock in her purse. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. She had a rock in her purse. Praise God. Oh, hallelujah. She walked out of Walmart. Now, I'm going to tell you how devastating this thing was. You can drive through Joplin. It didn't just take the building and the metal and the, and the steel post. It took the slab. It dug up the slabs out, out of the buildings of a Home Depot and different apartment buildings and took the whole thing away. A lot of people was missing. A lot of people got hurt. And Brother Blue can back this up. A friend of mine in Joplin, Missouri, he and his wife. Most of the people, praise the Lord, that was in that service that had a rock. Oh, my Lord, a special brother, Brother Chuck, a friend of mine. He said, Brother Taylor, I believe it was his daughter. His daughter called and said, Daddy, come. She said, I'm living on the third floor in my apartment building, and a Ford F-150 is in my living room. Wow! But nobody, nobody that had a lock got a stretch on them. Are y'all hearing me? I said, Hallelujah. The Lord, the power of the Holy Ghost, nobody but Jesus. Woo! Oh, hallelujah. The testimony started pouring in. Everybody that had a rock, are y'all hearing me? Amen. God sustained them. There were some that was there that was back and didn't have rock. They was, they was, some of them disappeared. Are you hearing me? Praise the Lord. And I, I saw Brother Terry. I was Brother Terry. Man, I said, I'm so glad I had that rock, Brother Terry. I'm so glad, praise the Lord, the Lord put that on your heart. Praise God. I said, I guarantee you. And I told him, I said, there were some critics in that service, Brother Terry. I said, but I guarantee you they was in the road looking for a rock. By the time, oh, oh, hallelujah. By the time that storm got through, I bet they was down there looking for a rock, trying to get it anointed, but it was too late. You got to move when the Holy Ghost say move. You got to believe when the word of God speaks. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. I thank God for this word. Hallelujah. We was over in India. I'm going to tell this right here. I'm going to get out of the way. We was over in India. And the crowds, I, I, I just can't hardly put it in words to, to let you picture or visualize how thick the people would stand and how far back they would stand but they would be so jam-packed together, there won't be a space to walk. In fact, if you went down in the crowd and was trying to get back up, you couldn't get back up. We have to pull each other over the top of the people to get them back up on the platform. They was that tight and that many people. Praise the Lord. But the Lord led Brother Terrell to come out that particular day. And when he came out, he was kind of like, you know, reaching out, and he said, I've been reaching out all evening long for this service. He said, but the Lord spoke to me and said, there's somebody in this audience. Now imagine 400,000 people. Imagine people so jam-packed, you can't hardly see one for the other. My Lord, he said, but the Lord said that there's somebody in this audience tonight when you leave this service, you're going to go home and kill yourself. You're going to go home, you're going to kill your wife, and you're going to kill your family. You done already agreed on it. And by the time he said, the, if, but if you'll let Jesus help you, God will break that spirit off of you. And by the time he said that, he stopped and pointed at that woman and said, ma'am, it's you. 
out of 400,000 people pointed his finger right at her. This woman told us after the service was over, she told us all this after the service, she told us, she said while, she was, while he was talking, she had her head in her hand praying. She said, Jesus, if you are real, she was a Muslim, she was a Hindu, I mean. She said, if you are real, she said, Jesus, help us. And she said, the next thing she knows, she looked up and saw Brother Terrell's finger pointing right at her. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. He called her up. She came up. She got her husband up. She got her two, I think two, maybe three little girls came up with her. And their plan was, the husband explained it all. Their plan was, they was in so much debt, they was under so much pressure, that he was going to kill the children, kill his wife, and then kill himself. But the Holy Ghost, oh hallelujah, led Brother Terrell to cast that suicide spirit over that family and set that family free. Glory to God. God saved them little girls' lives. God saved that mama. She turned her heart to Jesus. The man turned his heart to Jesus. The Lord delivered that whole entire family. Are y'all listening to me? I'm saying this, praise the Lord. A man in his own self can't do that. A man in his own self don't have that. Are y'all hearing me? It got to be somebody up there a little bit bigger. Are y'all hearing me? That cares about the needs of his people. That cares about the life of his people. That woman came up and that man came up and they got delivered. Praise the Lord. And we went and talked with them after the service was over with. Praise the Lord. And they, she began to tell us everything. And the Lord led us. We, You know, uh, when we cash our money in, they, they, they give us the rupees back. And it took 80 rupees at that time to make one dollar. And we just started giving them some money, Brother Terrell. And Sister Terrell sent them some money. And we were just giving them money to help them to get through what they were going through. Praise the Lord. But they gave their whole entire life to Jesus Christ. I wonder sometimes. I wonder. I don't know people. I don't know. I don't know. But I do wonder sometimes. My God, where would we be? Where would Africa be? Who would have taken this word for the last 40 years to Africa, to India, to these way out of the way places? To people who can't even, don't have enough money to have, get, have bread in the morning time and a piece of sugar cane at night. They barely have enough to eat. Brother Terrell have gone in the areas where all they ate. Now you can look at me funny and you can think this is funny. But all they had to eat was mice and baby birds and candy cane. The man said they worked all day for a slice of bread. Oh, hallelujah. But when the gospel came into the area, they would travel for days to be in one service. And when they got there, the Lord would have deliverance for them. All because God put a burden in a man's heart. Are y'all hearing me? To take the gospel to the world. I'm glad he's holding on to this word. I'm glad he's following Jesus Christ. I'm glad he's keeping the word of God before this generation. And God is telling us that a revival is coming. I'm saying, Lord, Brother Terrell days ain't over with. I'm saying, God, let them just get started. Let him take off again. Give him one more good run all over the face of the earth in a Holy Ghost revival and I'll follow him. I'll follow him. I'll follow him. Let's get ready, folks. Let's believe. Let's stand together as a people. Let's unite ourselves as the body that God has ordained for us to be. Let's stand strong and let get, let's get this revival spirit broken and get the gospel out to the world. God has prepared himself a man for these last days. And we have him here in our midst. I'm so glad to introduce to you and to present to others God's man of the hour, Brother David Turner.